Today I'll talk about sure victory. And this is a very important teaching that God has given me. And it will help you to live out your life to the fullest. And enjoy, you know, there are three parts. First, to enjoy God's love and His wonderful plan in our life. And secondly, that, uh, that we can take care of all the problems in our life. And the third is how to follow God's perfect will and live out our life to the fullest. And this is one teaching that God has taught me. And how did it come? Uh, where did it come from? It actually started in 1998 when I experienced the Holy Spirit, when an evangelist laid hands on me and I experienced great power and love uh, coming to me. And I was very, very touched, super. It was the first time that I ever experienced such a great love of God. And also I experienced the peace of God and uh, uh, released all the burdens and I experienced the uh, uh, it's, uh, I felt like in heaven, that feeling was. And I smell some very sweet smell. And I, it really impressed me that I can experience God like that. And after that, every day I, I pray to the Lord uh, as much as I can. And I kept experiencing God. And uh, shortly after that, every time I cry to Jesus, when I cry to Jesus, immediately His power and His joy come into me. And I really, I really enjoy that. I really uh, treasure that experience and the relationship with God. But one day, I called someone, and I told her about my experience, uh, expecting her to really, you know, to like that. But what happened was she did not uh, accept the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and she was angry, unhappy. I tried to calm her down, but she refused. And after we hanged up the phone, I, I prayed again, and I found that I could not have the joy. So I said, I have to do something. So I called her again and I said, if I make you feel unhappy, forgive me. Actually, I didn't do anything wrong. I just shared, but she couldn't accept that. And then I just said, okay, if I made you unhappy, please forgive me. But she is still... Uh, refused to accept that and she was still unhappy and I hang up the phone after I hang up the phone I said well I took care of that already on my side I did what I need to do and she refused to accept then it's her problem and then I said okay now I can put that problem down I can praise the Lord again and what I found that when I praise the Lord again I experienced this joy again so that gave me a great great lesson if there is any problem, I have to do my part to ask for forgiveness or to forgive or to love or to take care of problems. But after that, when people refuse to reconcile, uh, when people you know, keep saying words that hurt me, I don't have to take it. Or any kind of problems inside me or outside of me. And so starting from that day, I pay much attention to what happened to me. Uh, one way I, I did that is I kept praising God, loving God all the time. Even now, when I share with you, I'm loving Jesus. There's no words. There's no words. If I pray with words now, it's impossible to have two messages in my mind at the same time. But in my heart, I just like Jesus. I just love Jesus. And at the same time, I'm preaching. At the same time, I'm enjoying God and experiencing His power and His love in me at the same time. So when I live like that, whenever anything happens to me, immediately I notice it. That's the key thing. I'm not telling you to pay attention to, oh, do I have negative thoughts? I'm just saying, keep praising God, loving God, believing that we are loved by God. And then you can continue to experience His peace and His love. And then any time... When there is any negative experience, negative feelings, thinking, immediately we can notice that. And then I started to take care of that. And it's so simple. And I started to take care of every area of my life. Now this teaching, uh, there are 10 points. Actually, I have taught it for over 20 hours or more. Because 
it takes time to explain every point in detail. And today, I'm just starting. And then next time I come, I'll continue and continue. It will help you and transform your life because my life has been transformed. And also, it's not just theory. I, I, it really came from my experience. I have been hurt by people many, many times. People said negative things, negative things to me many, many times, thousands of times. And I learned to take care of that. And I learned to look at someone when someone is hurting me, saying negative words, and I can at the same time uh, bless the person and not be affected by the person. So that's something I've learned. And I'm going to share that with you. At the same time, how can we live up the full plan of God? Because God has a wonderful plan in our life that we can do great, 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 great things. Can you tell the person next to you, you can do great, 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 great things for God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is so good. Now John 10, 10 says that we can live abundantly. We can live it out to the fullest when we have Jesus. That's the plan of God. But it's a fact that not many Christians live our life to the fullest. It's a fact that many Christians live in suffering, burdens, worry, uh, or they could not live out the full plan of God. And it's a fact. We, if we look at our life, are we living our life like saints in heaven every day? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No burdens, no worry. Full of joy. Or are you living out the life, oh, my Paul said that to me, oh, make me, hurts, hurts me, oh, it's so difficult, oh, I have no power, I have no joy. Now, it's a fact that I noticed that there's a big, big difference between saints in heaven and saints on earth. The fact is, we can live our life to the fullest. We can actually, every day, you notice that when you praise God, do you notice great joy come to you? When we praise God, that we can experience His joy. So, every moment, we can actually live in joy, even when your boss yells at you. That's their problem, right? If it's someone else's problem, do we have to suffer because of that? We don't. It's their problem. Then you can bless the person, not be angry, and bless the person. Now, why? Why do so many Christians don't have the abundant life? What is the problem? Well, first, uh, the reason is most Christians follow God half-heartedly. Just have the heart. Never put God to the highest place in our life. Always just pay attention to things that happen to us. Most people live an earthly, uh, earthly way. Live our life in an earthly way. Just look at problems and say, oh, I have this problem and that problem. It's, most Christians live like that. Instead of looking at our life from heaven. But you say, I do live on earth. I don't live in heaven. But we can look at life from, the, from heaven's perspective and say, God will help me. God will bless me. There is nothing that can stop me. Nothing that can make me suffer. I can live out my life to the fullest and... Whatever people say, it doesn't have to hurt me. We can live our life like that. But a fact, the fact is, many Christians still look at life on earth uh, to a very high level. So we are affected by life on earth. And many Christians find that it's very hard to overcome sins. Sinful thoughts, sinful words, uh, that our, our behavior is always affected by things around us. And many Christians have this lie inside them and say, it's impossible to overcome sins. It's impossible to have no sins at all. But the point is, this teaching, I will tell you later, later there's one point about overcoming sin, that whatever sinful thoughts come in our mind, don't be overcome with guilt. Now, this is what most Christians do. When they have sinful thoughts, they say, oh, this dirty thought, this bad thought, negative thought. Why do I still behave like that? And then start to blame 
ourselves and say, oh, I'm so weak, I, I cannot do great things for God. And that's what happened to many Christians. Keep blaming ourselves. Keep having guilt. And that way, the whole day you say, oh, oh I fell again. Oh, I'm no good. I'm useless. You know, so that thought keeps staying in our mind. But if we say, I have sinned, so what? Everyone has sinned. So I've Confess my sin, Jesus, please forgive me, I'm sorry for my sins, and then immediately take care of our sins. That actually is an easy way, but most Christians prefer the harder way. <laughs> Keep suffering under our sins. Keep suffering under our guilt. But actually the best way is to say, well, Jesus came to forgive. I'm a sinner, so what? Everyone is a sinner. So I have sins, it's no surprise. No surprise. Just ask Jesus to forgive. And immediately, feel free. Immediately, don't have to blame ourselves. I'm a sinner. I'm a real sinner. I'm a big sinner. So what? Jesus forgives me. And I can walk in Jesus' way. That way, you find that you don't have to live in guilt and in sin. And immediately, Pray to God and ask God to give us strength to choose to follow God, choose to love God and love people. Now, it sounds simple, but actually it's simple. <laughs> but many people say, it's very hard. It's very hard to overcome my sins. But let me tell you, I did overcome my sins. I will say to you, I still have sinful thoughts. My point is, I... It's, now, I'm not saying I have negative, I'm, I have zero sinful thoughts. I'm saying when I have sinful thoughts, immediately I take care of that. I don't allow it to stay in my mind. You understand me? Immediately I choose to follow God and not be affected by my sin. So some Christians say it's impossible. Actually, it's possible. It's possible. And we can do it. Tell the person next to you, we can overcome our sins. Hallelujah. And the next thing is, many Christians say, oh, it's so hard to overcome our emotions. Some Christians say, when I wake up, for no reason at all, we might feel down. We might feel depressed, unhappy. And some Christians even have, you know, habitually live in depression. And negative thoughts, negative feelings. Has it happened to you? I have negative feelings from time to time. But I say I don't have to live in negative feelings. And I just choose to praise God and thank God for what I have. And not to, not to suffer because of what I don't have. And thank God and hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Put down all my burdens and I, then I live in peace and joy again. And we can do that. There is no reason to continue to suffer because of our emotions. But it's a fact that many Christians continue to feel negative. For instance, your boss is not treating you right and you just, when you look at him or her, you just feel unhappy. And that is negative emotion. And it's destructive to us, right? But you say, he or she really has problems. But that's his problem, right? Not yours. <laughs> so we don't have to suffer because of his or her problem. Next thing is family problems. Many Christians know that we should have you know, good family relationship. I know for you it's very difficult. Many of you have your husband, family, children in the Philippines. I know it's difficult. But still, you can try to do your best to maintain a good relationship and not to have yelling, unhappy feelings, and, and choose to have love, and understanding, and concern, and care. Or children's problem. Sometimes you say, I can follow God, but it's hard for, for me to help my children to follow God. But when we have peace, and joy, and love, and don't be so nagging. Sometimes mothers I know, have a tendency to be nagging. And that way, actually, children would reject us more. But when we can accept them and love them in a gentle way and reason with them in a gentle way and love them and communicate and listen to every word, 
every word they say, every feeling they have. That way they feel loved. And that way we can help our children. What well, spiritual weakness? Some Christians say, well, constantly my life is like this. Up and down and up and down. But I tell you, since I experienced the Holy Spirit, I don't remember having spiritual depression. I don't remember being spiritual weak, spiritually weak. What, what I do in, when I feel negative feelings or feel negative immediately, I praise God and Lord Jesus, you'll help me. There's no problem. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then I'm strength again. I don't remember living in a spiritual depression at all or weakness at all. Okay. And a lot of times because we follow our flesh. Galatians 6, 7 to 8. Let's read. Whoever sows to please their flesh, but the flesh will reap destruction. So when we follow a flesh, that way then we'll have destruction and suffering. A lot of Christians do not notice the flesh working, our sinful nature working. Okay, sure victory is a lifestyle that we can have victory, that for sure that we can have victory, and also in a very easy way in a joyful way. In Chinese, um, uh, the wording is a little different. In, in Chinese, the wording is um, victory in an easy, relaxed way. But I, I, you know, I, I cannot find a, a word. Maybe I can call it relaxed victory, but then people might misunderstand it. <laughs> but in Chinese, it's relaxed victory. In a relaxed way. Relaxed sometimes have a negative feeling. People say, well, that relaxed, I don't do anything. But what I mean is, live in a very relaxed, happy way to have victory. Winning, winning the battle without doing any more intense war. Right, people might misunderstand that. If you find a better word for me, let me know. You understand what I mean? It's basically, it's joyful, relaxed way, and we can have victory. Hallelujah. Now, sure victory has three main parts. Let's read together. A. Live in the love and wonderful plan of God. B. Take care of all problems in our life. C. Live out the perfect plan of God. Now, this is basically all the teaching in the Bible is about for us. First, live in the love and wonderful plan of God. God has great love for us and He has a wonderful plan. And then, take care of all problems in our life. Whatever problem it is, inside us or outside of us. And then see, live up the perfect plan of God. And it sounds so simple, right? Basically, actually, true victory is a way that I summarize what we do in a very simple way so you know how to live our perfect Christian life. Uh, it's not complicated and also it's very practical. Uh, so I hope that you remember this. Not only that you can apply it, but you can counsel other people. Christians are non-Christians. Sometimes non-Christians have problems facing their emotions, uh, the, uh, the relationships. And when you learn this, you can counsel them and help them. And then, oh, they see this is a good way, and then they will follow Jesus. So this is one way to help Christians and non-Christians, and help uh, non-Christians who believe in Jesus, and to see how Christians can live out victory and have joy in life. Okay, and then there are ten points. And today we might talk about one or two points. The first point is we experience and enjoy God's love all the time. Very simple. That we all know for God so loved the world. That we know that God loves us. But it's a fact that sometimes it stays in our mind only. A lot of times Christians believe that God loves us. But when we have problems we say, oh, God doesn't quite like me now. I'm not likable. I'm not lovable. Because I sin again. I'm so weak. And a lot of times, we always compare with people. And when we look at ourselves in the mirror, a lot of times we don't like ourselves. We say, I wish I looked like her or him. I wish I had more money. I wish, you know, I wish I were someone else. A lot of times we don't really enjoy God's love. 
to believe and experience and enjoy the three parts, to believe that God really loves us. Some people just stay at the belief level. And a lot of times the belief level is very low, maybe 30% believing. Isn't it true? Do we believe all the time, God really loves me? Or just 30% of the time? Or 30% of the degree? Actually, God's love's degree, the degree of His love is so great. I would say most Christians just believe in God's love to 10% or less. That we don't really believe in 100% of God's love. We believe in 100% His love and 100% of ourselves believe in God's love. We will live in really nine clouds, living, oh, walking on earth is like in heaven. Oh, hallelujah, I'm loved. Oh, I'm blessed. Oh, there's no burden. So believing and then experiencing is a different thing. That when we pray, we can experience God's love. But some people just experience God's love once in a long while. When they come to church to praise, and then they experience some love. But then when they go home, no more. And then, not only experiencing God's love, but enjoying. Enjoying. Oh, I enjoy God's love. It's very different, right? Do you daily, oh, I enjoy God's love. <laughs> or you just know God's love. That's the first level. Knowing, believing, and then experiencing, and then enjoying. There is no reason to stop us enjoying God, right? Yes. We have all reasons to enjoy God all the time. But it's a fact that Christians don't think like that. Even when we eat, we eat. But do we enjoy? Oh, God made this wonderful food. Oh, so good. Or when we have good sharing with Christians, good relationship with Christians, we don't say, Oh, I enjoy the relationship. I treasure the Christian friends we have. We treasure our pastor. Treasure what we have in Jesus. And enjoy it. I try my best. Actually, sometimes we don't have to use strength to try, but just relax and try. <laughs> to enjoy God's love every day, every moment. Romans 8.22, let's read. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Here it talks about that God did not spare his own son and die for us. It is great love. Jesus doesn't have to die for us. God doesn't have to give us salvation, but he chose to. He chose to. He loves us. That he doesn't want us to perish. But God can say, it's your fault. You'll bear the consequence. But God is not like that. He has great, great love to send Jesus to die for us and bear our sins and bear the curse of God. That He became cursed for us. In Galatians, He said that because He, he took up the curse of God that He became cursed Himself. We don't deserve that. So every time when we think of that, we say, Oh, Jesus, you became sin for us and you became curse for us so that we are free from curse and free from sins. It's a, a great blessing and I can enjoy that and, and say, oh, I enjoy being forgiven. Isn't it wonderful yeah. to have forgiveness? Yes. When we compare the time when we had guilt, it's very different, right? Sometimes we live in guilt. And then when we have forgiveness, freedom from guilt, we say, oh, it's so free, hallelujah, so free. It's so good to be guilt-free. Mm -hmm. And we should enjoy that. Oh, I have a clear conscience, so free. And we should enjoy that and, and, and live and enjoy God's work every day. And then he also, along with Him, graciously give us all things. But a lot of times we look at what we don't have and don't look at what we have. When I look at you, I believe that you are not starving physically. I mean, you all look not thin. You, are, you all look good. <laughs> Looks like you are not starving. And you, you look good, your clothes look good. So it looks like you are not penniless that you do have money to buy clothes. So when we have this, we're saying, 
I mean, we, we have good life. And we can say, oh, I can enjoy everything we have. Because Jesus has given us all things. But you say, well, compared to some people, they have cars, they have big house. Well, they are a, a boss. And, and it's them who tell me what, what to do. I got to tell them what to do. And you say, it's unfair. I don't have a lot of things that they have. When you look at what we don't have, then people have all reasons to blame and to worry. But when we look at what we have, well, we have a lot. Jesus has given me a lot, and I can be so joyful. You know, uh, at the place where I live, I, uh, I can always hear someone singing in English. And then I, I believe that is a Filipino. <laughs> that this housemaid, she just worked at it, praise the Lord. <laughs> I can hear her singing all the time, so joyful, so happy. So it doesn't, we don't have to suffer being a housemaid. We can enjoy doing our work, right? Amen. We can enjoy serving our daily boss. It's okay, but at the same time we serve God. Amen. Hallelujah, and we look at what we have. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I can enjoy my food. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you look at life like that, we have all reasons to enjoy and be happy, right? But actually, most Christians don't live like that. We have, a lot of times, we have a mentality of being negative instead of completely positive. Can we live like that? Can you tell the person next to you? We can live with a completely positive mentality. Totally positive mentality. Hallelujah. And then your boss will say, what is the secret of being so happy? I want that. Hallelujah. And then Zephaniah 3.17, that's me. He will take great delight in you. Let's read. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. This is the second part of Zephaniah 3.17. It's a very, very good Bible verse. Hope that we'll remember. Zephaniah 3.17. We remember John 3.16. This is 17. 317 and 79. Very wonderful words. Here it talk about God's love has positive emotions. You know, emotions, there's negative and positive. And God loves us with emotions. Now, let me ask you, do mothers love children with positive emotions? Do they have good emotions toward their children? When you think about your children, you have good feeling, right? Not just the mind, right? You really are happy when you see your children. You really are happy from deep inside. When you go back to the Philippines to visit, when you see your children uh, and your husband, you might laugh from your heart, right? You cannot stop your laugh. <laughs> this woman, I'm just so happy, right? God is like that. Some people think of God's love is just loving the crowd, loving all the people. For God so loved the world, just the world. But God's love is full of emotions, full of oh, positive energy. Here it says that He takes great delight in you. That He really, is so He's so happy to have you. He's so happy that you come to you. He's so happy that. He has good relationship with you. Amen. That he has positive emotions. That so when you think of God, sometimes he will say, Well, God likes the pastor much more than me. God likes someone else much more than me. I'm just a little little Christian. I'm nobody. But actually, God loves every little person. Amen. Every little person is very important in his eye. You are the apple of his eye. <laughs> when I talk about these verses, actually when I read the Bible, I always 
go into the Bible verses in a deep way. Think deeply about the Bible verses and enjoy the promises in the Bible. So this verse is really one of my life verses. My most important verses, one of the most important verses in my life. That I know that God has great delight in me. And He'll quiet you with His love. Like a mother. With His love, He'll quiet us, comfort us. When a child is crying, when a, baby, when a mother holds a child into her, her arms, the, mother, the child will calm down and, and enjoy the mother's love. And when we come to God, we can enjoy His love. His love is wonderful, isn't it? His love is wonderful. That we can enjoy His love. And then, He will rejoice over you with singing. Do people see you and then sing? I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm so happy with you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do people see you and sing over you? Not too often, right? <laughs> I sing to my wife all the time. I, I made up songs. But it's in Chinese. I mean, I can put it in English for you, like, Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. It's so wonderful to have you in my life. Oh, oh. I enjoy you, oh my love. <laughs> Just sing. But I sing in Chinese, not in English. And I thank God, God put music in me all the time. I just sing and that music comes out. Hallelujah! And God is like that too. He rejoices over us with singing. When you think of God's love like that, is there any reason to suffer in a life? There is no reason. Imagine. The prince of a country loves you with strong love and, and say to you, I really love you. I really like you. You are my love. Do you still have worry? If the prince of a country say, you are my princess. I love you so much. Do you still have worry? No. no. But now we have the prince of princes. I mean, he is the king of kings. Amen. He loves us so much. Do we have reasons to worry, to suffer? No. We have reasons to really enjoy. Oh, 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 oh I'm so blessed. Oh, oh, oh hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Not to only experiencing God, but enjoying God. Some people say, well, some people, when you lay hand on them, they are filled with the joy of God, but I never experienced that. I just experienced a little peace. I said, that's already very wonderful. When you thank God for the peace, the peace represents God's love. Then we already will be comforted. And really, our heart will rejoice and enjoy. Oh, the peace of God comes to me. I can enjoy His peace. Can you, can you really enjoy every work of God in your life? Every time when God does something, enjoy the work of God. Psalm 90, verse 14. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Now here it talks about that satisfy us with your unfailing love so that we are full of the love of God so that it shows in our life, right? So that it shows that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. And we can be glad all the days of our life. Every day, no matter what has happened, that we can rejoice in Him. Because life sometimes is difficult. I have experienced many difficulties. When I teach this teaching, people say, well, you must live in a very easy way all the time. I said, no. I have experienced much difficulties. Uh, much difficulty in my life that in my life, Many things has happened in my life. I suffered much in the past, but I learned to overcome and live in the love of God. Yeah. It's from my real experience, daily experience. So 
we can all sing for joy. So all these verses, you can put in your life and put in your prayer and say, yes, I can be satisfied with God's love, that I can rejoice all the days of my life. Oh, I can rejoice. So, so say it out. Say it out these verses all the time. I can rejoice all the days of my life. Oh, I can rejoice. Oh, I can enjoy. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> now, some people say, it's hard for me to believe God loves me because I have so many difficulties. But one thing is very important. Difficulties doesn't mean God doesn't love us. Very yeah. important. And when we rely on God in difficulties, we can, it can bring us closer to God. Actually, my habit of calling out to God all the time started in my first ministry. Before I became a pastor, I really enjoyed church life. Whatever I did, people appreciated it. But after I became a pastor, uh, some people started to criticize because they expect me to really perform in a very great way. And they found that you know, in the past they saw me and then they said, well, when he become a pastor, he will really be a great pastor. But I did not immediately become a great pastor. So there are negative words. And then when I heard that, I felt hurt. And I started to cry to God, Lord Jesus, help me. Lord Jesus, help me. It's so hard to be a pastor. Oh, when I heard all this gossip comes to me, it makes me feel bad, feel sad. And I start to cry to God, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, and start to praise God more. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. In my heart, I was, I was still heavy. But after a while, I start to feel peace. I start to be relieved. And then after experience an infilling of the Holy Spirit, I experienced the joy of God and said, this is a really great gift. Now, some people experience joy, they forget about it in a few days' time. But when I experienced the joy of God, I said, this is really a great, 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 great gift. Hallelujah! I can experience the peace of God. I can experience the joy of God. I can experience heaven. So I always said to myself, I experienced a little portion of that joy and love in heaven. How wonderful it would be when I go to heaven. And I appreciate God. And I think of God's work all the time. And I appreciate His love all the time. Can you also do that? Instead of looking at difficulties, when I have difficulties, I still continue to have difficulties. Do we have to feel sad in difficulties? We don't. We don't. People think this is a natural uh, consequence. When you have difficulties, it's natural to be unhappy. It's not necessary. When people say bad things to us, we don't have to feel bad. We can say this is his problem. I can admit my faults and I can continue to forgive and love the person and not be affected. Is it, isn't it true? When you have many things to do, what you can do is just start to do the first most important thing and then do the next and do the next. When you have 10 things to do, you, you don't have to say, oh, there are too many things to do. I cannot do it. Oh, I cannot do it. Oh, it's just too hard. Too hard to live. Oh, oh. Some people are like that, right? Just do one thing at a time. First thing, next thing, third thing. And when you cannot finish, you just have to tell people, I'm sorry, I cannot finish my work. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I mean, they won't cut, up, cut off your head, right? Because <laughs> you couldn't finish your work. You just say, this is how much I can do, and just relax. Even when people blame you, well, I've done my best. I don't have to. Yeah. To feel bad because of the blame, right? Yeah. So difficulties doesn't mean we have to suffer. Can you tell the next person? <laughs> difficulties <laughs> doesn't mean <laughs> we have to suffer. <laughs> we don't have to feel bad because of difficulties. <laughs> Say to the next person, we don't have to feel bad because of difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> now I hope you remember what I say today and try it. And next time I'll ask you. Amen. Have you applied it? Can you put it in life, in your life? Okay, how to experience and enjoy God's love? First, enjoy God's love in nature. Enjoy food. 
and not only enjoy the taste, enjoy God's love in the food. Think of God designing the food. Isn't food wonderful? Do you like food? Yeah, we all like food, right? But a lot of times we just eat. We don't think of God. Even though we thank God for the food, but immediately after the prayer, we forget. <laughs> and just eat and enjoy the food, but don't think of the love of God. Now, when your mother does something for you, you know, did a wonderful dish for you, you just say, Mother, you're so good. You're a good cook. And I thank you for your love. You cook this with love. But a lot of times we don't link this to God. Thank God. God made the wonderful food. And God can design the wonderful food, right? It's delicious, it's good looking, and also it's good for our health. So every action, when you look at things around us, we can see God's love all the time. We can see the flowers, the trees, the mountains, the beach. So beautiful. And it's because of God's love, right? Actually, you know, in the past when people don't live in cities, when people live in uh, villages, they don't have emotional problems that much. Because then when they live in nature, look at, you know, the mountains, the trees, and the flowers, they, they feel more relaxed. But when people live in walls, they feel more tense, right? So natural things are more beautiful and much better than man-made things. And when you look at everything, you look at our body, it's so wonderful. I can see so clearly. Isn't it wonderful? That we don't have eyes like snails. You know, we have eyes <laughs> like snails, just barely seeing light and darkness. Oh, here is a person coming. <laughs> but we can see clearly. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Now, take a deep breath and enjoy the air around us. <sighs> oh, doesn't it feel good to breathe? So enjoy breathing, right? Hallelujah. We can walk. We have legs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything. I can eat. I can taste. Every part of our body is put in the right place, right? So when we see things in nature and water too, taking a shower is enjoyable, right? Water feels good. Oh, oh, hallelujah. And sleeping feels good, right? Mm. Wonderful. God gave us sleeping. And God gave us uh, smiles and laughter, right? That's wonderful too. Ha ha ha. ha, 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 ha. Try it now. Isn't it? Ha, 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 ha. Doesn't it feel good? So everything around us and in us, we can experience God's love. God gave us laughter because of love so that we can enjoy life, right? But people prefer to look at negative things. We have many, many reasons to rejoice, but people choose to look, you know, a good, wonderful picture. They prefer to look for a little imperfection, right? A lot of times we look at imperfection instead of the wonderful things. So first, enjoy God's love in nature. That we can do all the time, right? Look at the flowers around us, so beautiful. Actually, a lot of adornment, in the world is from nature. That God made flowers so wonderful and so simple. So simple. And God made it so wonderful. And actually, people are also beautiful and wonderful. But you say, well, I'm, I'm not so good looking as those movie stars. We don't have to look at movie stars. I mean, every person is good looking. People always say, I don't look as good as the movie stars, and then we feel bad about our look. Because we compare with you know, the best looking people, but we don't have to. Actually, you look at the person, the look is beautiful, and also when people follow God, the heart is beautiful too, right? Amen. And we say, God is so wonderful that you make people, you transform people. And then second, meditate on God's love revealed in the Bible. That every word of God show God's love. And you say, you know, the few verses that we look at just now, then you say, I enjoy God's love in the word of God. And meditate on it and put it in our hearts. And then third, thirdly, believe in God's love in Jesus' redemption. Jesus did not have to die for us, but he died for us. 
Jesus have, doesn't have to prepare heaven for us, but He prepared heaven for us. Jesus doesn't have to serve us all the time to give us love and joy and peace and plan our life and, and provide for us people to bring us to Jesus, right? There are people who help us to come to Jesus. There are people who lift up our spiritual life and we thank God for God's redemption and His help in our, in our spiritual life. And then fourthly, enjoy love in close relationship with God. Every time when you pray, oh, when the peace comes, thank God. I try to stay in this mood all the time, from morning to night. And even when I wake up in the middle of the night, I will thank God, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Why not live in enjoyment? Why not enjoy a life? Is there any reason why not to enjoy life? But have you chosen to enjoy life? A lot of people don't have the mentality of enjoying God's love and enjoying love, uh, life. Many people prefer to look at what still needs to be done. Prefer to look at difficulties and shortcomings. And not to say, I can live and enjoy God's love. Can we enjoy God's love all the time? Amen. So, say it out. I can enjoy God's love all the time. I can enjoy God's love all the time. And then fifthly, experience God's love in daily help from Him. When you pray to God and then God helps you and you say, Wow, so wonderful. God, listen to my prayer. Answer my prayer. So wonderful. Oh, but a lot of times people forgot about what God did to us. I remember everything God did to me. I remember. You know, actually, there were three times that I could have died. One time I was driving on the freeway. And the speed was, you know, uh, freeway speed. And the road was clear. It was night. At night, very late. And I didn't see there was ice on the road. On the just a small area. I mean, there's no snow, no ice, nowhere, except for one spot. And then when my car went to that spot, maybe the road was not even. And then the car started to spin. And then spin and pass the lane left to me, and then go to the middle of the freeway. And then immediately, a big truck passed by. I said, if I just spin half a second, Later, I will be in heaven already. And I said, well, I'm very happy to be in heaven. But I also prefer to serve God more. <laughs> I actually enjoy heaven more than earth. But I say, but I can do great things for people. And I, when I, every time I think of that, I thank God. And one time, I pulled a sliding door down, a garage door. It was a mistake. I thought I can, you know, because uh, that garage door has some problem. Normally, I just push a button. But actually, there's a string next to it. I didn't pull the string. I thought I can just put my finger into the, uh, a, you know, it's a folding door. And there's a, uh, uh, it's not a hole. It's a, you know, that, the, that how the, uh, the boards fold together, you know, and, and it opened up. And when it's up there, it's open up. And I just pull it, and I think just pull out my finger. But I didn't realize that. The moment I pull, immediately held my fingers. And it really hurts. I hurt for a few months. And I said, if the power was a little stronger, I cannot play guitar or piano anymore. And I would have, my few fingers would be cut off. And every time I thought of that, I said, thank God, I still have my fingers. Oh, it's so wonderful to have fingers. It's so wonderful to have fingers. So everything that happened to me that God helped me, I always appreciate God. And I hope you remember this. And then next time when I come, I'll say, did you enjoy God's love daily? And I hope your pastor will continue to ask you this question. Did you enjoy God's love this week? And just choose to rejoice. I have all reasons to rejoice and relax and enjoy life. Now this is the first point. But the most important thing is how to apply it in your life. 
Okay, do you have questions? Maybe you say, this is theoretical, this is just a theory. How can I live in perfect love of God every day? It's too hard, or my difficulties is, are too great. Do you have questions that you say, it's too hard to live like that? My, my, you know, I always have negative emotions, life is so difficult. If you have questions now, ask me and I can answer your questions. You have, can you think of, can, do you think you can apply it in your life? That's the most important thing. It's not just a theory, it's a workable theory. Any question? Okay, now. If you don't have questions, we'll rise and pray at this point. We'll pray. Let's rise to pray. And then, think of God's love. Think of God's love now. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. God's love. 